Okay, so um, we have seen different things in this uh, within these previous chapters. Okay, so now we are focusing on uh, the posterior uh, prediction, and this within these chapters, the order basically basically look at how uh, it presents a case study, and uh, it looks how. Uh, the estimation of the posterior uh, look, looks like and how how is good basically if it's okay if it's not okay if it's able so the result of uh, this prediction uh, is able to to answer the question okay so the chapter is chapter eight posterior inference uh, prediction and uh, the learning objectives are uh, solving some tasks so be able to understand um, uh, how to address tasks in posterior analysis uh, such as estimation hypothesis testing and prediction there you go okay uh, the uh, data set that we are going to use for evaluating um, and uh, addressing um, the posterior uh, distribution is a data set which is uh, quite interesting and uh, it is from the MoMA um, is the, the modern art museum in New York and the question is, uh, what are the chances that this modern artist is uh, uh, Generation X or even younger, such as born in 1965 or later? So first uh, reaction to, to this question is, but, you know, modern, modern art doesn't, necessarily mean new art okay and the other mentioned that it takes long time for for something to be uh, accepted or recognized as a piece of art so it then uh, compared to old pieces they look like modern art but they are already old when they they are recognized as a piece of art. So the the question that uh, it's attempt to uh, address is this: uh, What are the chances that the the, the artist uh, in, within this uh, uh, um, museum of modern art is younger? uh then uh, 1965 or later so so born in 1965 or later okay so it's part of generation so um well as i said already last time i come from a theoretical background in probability so probability distributions uh, all those things uh, whatever you can imagine um now getting to practice okay so applying the theoretical formulation into um, a machine that works out my uh, you know theoretical speculations and assumption and theorems and so it's uh quite challenging to me so and but, but it's uh nice to uh, to see that uh, it's not only me so the, the, the first step into um, attempt to identify the posterior distribution, uh, it's the speculation. So basically, um, I assume some elements that would be a kickstart for the um, final distribution to be as it as it should be so as i expect to be okay I'm, uh, so um, let's let's say in the, in this contest uh that we is a major modern art museum 
disproportionately display artists born before 1965. So when you answer your question that you want to know how many are they that are younger, so you need to consider that those ones that are displayed in the, the museum are even lower than them. So they are disproportionately displayed. Uh, and so the, it's, not, it's not the only, um, uh, so you need to uh, consider the contest, contest of, the, of when you answer your question. So let, let's uh, start into uh, looking at the data that are in, the, in this chapter. So we have like 100 artists. Uh, we have a P, uh, which is the proportion of artists uh, that are present the, in major, major US modern art museum that are generation X or younger. So it is most likely false. So this P value is the, the proportion of artists that are uh, generation X, X. So they are younger than, than expected. Uh, but this proportion of all artists, uh, so of, of young artists, uh, in the museum, uh, uh, in the modern art museum, it's most likely to fall below the fifty percent. So they 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 are lower than fifty percent. So this proportion of uh, younger artists, um, and so we attempt to uh, set a prior. So we set a prior to be a beta with alpha four and beta six. Okay. Um, so this is uh, because P is more likely to fall below 50%. So we set this prior, yeah. <laughs> and um, this is displayed the first result which is the other complaint, uh, you know, saying that uh, uh, this is not to be complained. Uh, so it's uh, a very good result. So a very good uh, attempt to assign a prior because the posterior, which is this gr uh, green um, uh, distribution here, it's very close to, to be likely uh, uh, very close to the likelihood, okay, distribution. So, and it is within the likelihood and the prior. So, uh, it, it is good. Have you got anything to, uh, like, uh, some additions or things uh, that you want to say, maybe? Uh, yeah, so like you were saying, the posterior distribution is very closer to the likelihood than the prior distribution. And as we discussed in previous chapters, that's because we have a, a larger sample size with n equals 100. So that's where the weight is going. Okay. Um... My, uh, it's why we set this beta to be four and six. So alpha equals to four and beta equals to six. Why we, we, we start setting this value? How? Okay. Uh, uh, well, as you might have mentioned already, one of the reasons is that with a four or six distribution, the expected value, uh, if you look at the middle of the yellow curve, the expected value is at four over 10 or 40%. And the mm -hmm. earlier note said that the number or proportion of Gen X artists is under 50%. So that's a, a good mm -hmm. guess. Okay. So I said the alpha to be like four. 
and in okay i i know that uh so we talked about this in the previous chapters that we can obtain the alpha by the beta and, and so on but uh it's, it's still a bit like guessing to me uh, so even if i because um if i do 4.5 if i do 3.5 what's changing basically okay so yeah this is the data set which is the moma sample uh, and uh, it is inside the bias rules package and uh, you see it's made of artists there is in the name of the artist the country the birth uh, death if it's alive or not and then generation x this is what we need basically and then the gender the count uh, year acquired and etc so that that this is a nice data set that you can uh use it and uh, to do uh many things and uh, like calculating the proportion of uh the, the when the those one in generation x are have been acquired uh the minimum year the maximum year then then you can see it's mentioning in the chapter uh if they are many or they uh so what is this proportion but in general we now stop on the proportion of uh how many are they basically within the the all artists in this data set and uh, we see that uh, they are just 14 percent uh, of the uh, generation x uh, x in this um, in this sample and so having uh these proportions such, such as uh, we set a, bi a beta binomial framework we set a beta binomial framework and this is because our uh, uh, why so our um, response variables what we are uh, um, aim we aim to predict follows a binomial mo binomial model so we have this uh, binomial model uh, which uh, is made of n uh, uh, hundreds um, um, so the, the, the n uh, is 100 and then we have a proportion of this uh, um, which is p uh, and then we have the the prior distribution for for p uh, which is the beta that we have just mentioned okay so we have this binomial model for our generation x and the prior distribution is this so we can uh let's say that the, the 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 chapter ends here and then all, all that follows it's going back to here and expanding because it calculated the, the posterior distribution which is obtained and this is my question okay if i have alpha equals to four and beta equals to six okay and I know uh, so I know uh, that uh, my prior distribution is this, okay? The, uh, and that uh, so I want to um set the posterior this calculate the posterior distribution and my posterior distribution will be a beta of 19 and 92. my question is if this bit here n is 100 
why it's 14, okay? Why it's 14, because it, it's my proportion, okay? So I have uh, 100 minus 14, and, and so I found, can, can um, uh, find beta to be equals to six, okay? And that, that, that is fine. But then how can I obtain this 18? This is something that I didn't uh, really, uh, maybe, maybe, um, so ju let's just uh, maybe go forward a bit. <laughs> And so we now going to assume that we already found our posterior, and we now going back to this uh, to be to so we basically guessed our prior, and we found this this posterior, which is very good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but now what we are going to do is we are going back and try different things and different numbers and everything. And basically the tasks are the estimation, the hypothesis testing, and the prediction. Okay, the, the posterior estimation, okay, uh, you can see here we have two, two examples. Okay, so one is for uh, 18 and 92, and it is this one here, so it's much uh, less, um, so it's very concentrated, okay, much, much less dispersed, um, uh, the, the, the less variability and everything. While the other one is we try with four and 16. And so we can see that this is quite different. And uh, here is the mean. And as you can see, this no point two, and this is uh, less than no point two, so about fourteen, no point fourteen or something. So this is much more reasonable. Still, not very, you know. Uh, you can calculate the um, interquantiles with this function q beta. Uh, setting the minimum, the maximum level to the alpha and beta, because they, they now, these two values are now the alpha beta for the posterior, okay? Um, so what we done uh, is the, um, um, estimation and now once you basically the, the reasoning is this you do a, an estimation and then uh, attempt to you know set up prior have a look at the posterior if it works if it's okay and then you you dig uh, a bit more um, another techniques that is um, used is the hypothesis testing and there is even the the last uh, very bit of the chapter where they discuss about uh, the the um, uh, like Bayesian the differences between Bayesian analysis and uh, um, so frequentist and um, um, in Bayesian uh, how how this they they differs and everything. But um, here is mentioned uh, the hypothesis testing in a way that if we, for example, set um, a proportion, uh, we say we have 20% um, of this generation X in, uh, in, in, as an artist in the, in the museum, okay? And we, we say our new hypothesis is that uh, our p-value 
will be greater than 20%, greater or equal than 20%. And, and, and the alternative hypothesis is just the opposite, so lower than 20%. So we can do one side testing or uh, two side testing. If we do one side testing, we obtain something uh, which is quite reasonable. Okay, so we calculate to evaluate our, how much is plausible that p, uh, our p-value is lower than 20%, uh, we can calculate this posterior probability, which is the probability that uh, an artist um, uh, so 14 artists uh, have um, are in um, in the museum with a probability of 20 percent yeah yeah that sounds good um at this moment i'm wondering because we uh have different terms for probability and likelihood this is yes a posterior probability i guess i was briefly wondering if this is going to be normalized but yeah, i think it is yeah later on later on they finally use the r norm but uh, uh, when they do uh, the simulations so then then they switch to uh, normal distribution but before that they they look they, they work with this beta okay so and the probability um, beta is the when when p is 20 percent and we have set the values alpha and beta because we found uh, that the posterior that we have uh, within our first assumptions was uh, good enough, okay? And uh, we found these two values, 18 and 92. So if we attempt to say that 20% or 0.2, is the uh, is our p uh, is our the value of our proportion our p um we are able to find uh hello are you still there While we're waiting for Federica to um, rejoin, oh, here we are. Sorry about that, but my uh, connection, my, my mobile switched off. And so I had to um, change uh, device. Oh. Okay, I was, yeah, sorry about that. So, 
um, I was saying that if I go back for a second, uh, where I was uh, before. Okay, so this is the the value. Uh, so this is the initial proportion. So our y it's 14. Okay. And then we say that uh, okay. Fourteen. Mm -hmm. Where is the okay? Let's go back here. Uh, okay, so um, among the sampled artists, y is equal. So we set the, uh, our our response variable to be equals fourteen, which are uh, our generation X or younger. Okay. So now I did the. Um, and so uh, going forward, uh, our hypothesis. You see, here we 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 have some some calculations okay so the probability that y uh, is equal to 14 given uh, our new hypothesis is true it's no point one five one okay and uh, the other is a point uh, no point eight four nine uh, and this is um, uh, this is being calculated okay here so we have already calculated the prob posterior probability of the alternative hypothesis to B. And, um, and so let's assume this, this is um, an integral that has been calculated no? this way. Yeah, you can see that it is an integral uh, when we assume that this is uh, uh, the alternative hypothesis, so p is lower than uh, twenty percent. So to to calculate this this probability, we do the integral that goes from zero to no point two uh, of the likelihood, uh, which is uh, uh, which is the uh, this value here. And this is, uh, for example, the result. So no point A49 and the posterior probability that uh, it, you can calculate with P beta of 20. And you have the first one. Okay. Which is this. And it's calculated like that. And it is when you do the other one, so it would be uh, the uh, reverse. So basically, you are calculating uh, one minus uh, uh, the other, and so one minus uh, no point uh, eight uh, eight four nine is no point one five one. Using these two values, let's go back into my uh, thing. Le using uh, these two values, 
and with R you can do this. So you use the, the first one, which is the alternative hypothesis, because when uh, you calculate uh, that this is lower, this, these things here, you can calculate easily with the integral more easily than calculate this one here, okay? So then you uh, find this other one with one minus the result of this. So uh, the posterior odds, which are the p-value, uh, the proportion of the p-values, you do this, excuse me. And the, the result of the, so the odds, it's 5.62. So the posterior odds, it's about uh, 5.6. And the, as well as the prior odds, it's um, close to uh, 0.1. And so with these two values, we can find the bias, the, the Bayesian factor, which is the proportion of the odds. The proportion, which is the, the, the radio of the odds. And um, a Bayesian factor of one, uh, means that your alternative hypothesis um, stays constant um, while um, a value greater than one means that your uh, alternative hypothesis is increasing uh, or if it's lower than one uh, will be decreasing. And it's, I think it's uh, uh, worth it to go back here and have a um, um, side look at this. Uh, basically, the posterior odds that P will be lower than 20%, it's roughly 5.6. Okay, this, this, this says that our P is nearly six times more likely to be below 20% than to be above. Six times more likely. Okay. And um, what, um, why the prior odds? Um, you see, they are roughly only one in 10. Okay, so we have a prior which says that our regeneration is about rough, it can be roughly one in 10, and our posterior which says that the proportion is nearly six times more likely to be below than 20%. So they, 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 uh, our results basically uh, uh, are that uh, um, the proportion of our generation X in the modern, uh, uh, in the museum will be, um, about 20%. So it's very likely, it's six times more likely that we'd be uh, below than 20%. Basically, in our data, we had the 14% of our generation X. And uh, our posterior, Analysis says that it will be six times more likely that this proportion uh, with other data or, will be uh, again uh, nearly, so within 14 and, uh, and 20%. So six times uh, more likely to be below than 20%.
um, yeah. So this bias factor, uh, Bayesian factor, which is the ratio of the posterior odds and the prior odds, what tells us is that uh, roughly, um, um, six times higher than the prior odds. So the posterior odds are roughly six ta uh, 60 times higher than the prior odds. Okay, so that, that's what I attempt to say. So our prior says that one in 10 is generation X, and our posterior says that it six it would be six time um, more likely likely to to have uh, a value which is below than twenty percent. So there is, there is like a, a, a quite uh, a difference uh between uh, the, the 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 prior uh odds and the posterior odds so about six times difference uh within the two uh, the two odds and so this is what the bayesian factor says so we have a bayesian factor of 60 and this is what what this means uh what is special? Uh, so, if this is equals to one, the plausibility of uh, the alternative hypothesis didn't change. So, in light of the observed data, so we can say if it, if it was like one, power the uh, Bayesian factor was one, but now we have a, a very large Bayesian factor because we have sixty, and so the plausibility of uh, the alternative hypothesis increased in light in light of the observed data. And so it is very convincing the evidence uh, for the alternative hypothesis. Let's go back uh, here. Then uh, I'm not going uh, through this two-sided test because uh, um, the other says that it's not, it's not very useful. Uh, he attempts to, to, to set a 30% um, proportion and then uh, uh, the alternative is just to be different of 30%, but it is uh, obviously uh, not very useful. So let's jump into the posterior prediction. And the question is, what number would you predict are uh, done by artists that are generation X or younger? What number? So basically, if we change the proportion of the generation x in our uh, museum we see that uh, uh, the distribution uh, changes it's way yeah? okay so when we uh, we are now at the third step okay we have done estimation hypothesis testing and now we are predict um we are uh, predicting so we we now want to we have an idea of what's happening and uh, our the answer of our uh, hypothesis and we now want to predict and see if we change data what's going to happen. So we like to predict the outcome of new data. This is our uh, prediction result. So our uh, outcome. And uh, again, as before, we, we have uh, uh, sampling variability in the day. We need to consider the variability both in the sampling and in the posterior, okay? Sampling variability in the data and the posterior variability in the proportion. 
uh, in P. Okay, so generally greater P is the greater is the, the, the prediction tend to be. In fact, if we have a, a, a higher value of P, um, we have a different um, result. So this is the basically um, the probability uh, distribution. Uh, probability distribution uh, of our uh, prediction based on the value, the, on the observed value. And again, this is an integral. Uh, in the book, it doesn't say, it. Uh, I don't think it's, um, uh, I've jumped uh, uh, a few things, but um, I think this is the, uh, so the, the, the most important part, but then there is a calculation that shows you uh, if you set, okay, you, we have a 14% um, or uh, let's set 14 on 100, 14 is our observed value. And so it is a binomial. And so on 20, um, uh, we take, uh, we don't know what, how, how many they, but we want to find this value. Um, so we want to see on, on, uh, on 20, how many are uh, generation X. And so this is a um, constant value. And we use this um, uh, 18, 112. And uh, so this is uh, the, the two value, the alpha and the beta that we got at the very beginning. And um, and so Uh, you can then attempt to assign a value and see if if uh, what if is three, okay? What if on twenty, uh, on a sample of twenty, I can pick three, they are generation X. What is this uh, probability? And the probability is twenty percent, but twenty two percent. So, but uh, you know the the very the, the very uh, interesting part is the very beginning of the chapter because it set the prior, and then with the function uh, looks at the uh, shape of the posterior and decide if it's good or not, basically. Then uh, mm, this is even interesting because we, we, we can calculate the probability that it will be greater than five. And then, so this thing changes because we now sum all the result, single result from here. So this is a point distribution, which is equal to three. And why here we are looking at all values that are greater than and equal than five. So we are going to sum each point from five to 20. And so again, uh, the value that would be that on 20, uh, that would be greater than or equal than five, it's 23%. So. I don't know. While in general, the expected value, so on average, on average, there would be three. Most, most probably, 
Then on 20, there will be about three. Um, the, the last bit, this is the very last bit, because then there is a, the, a discussion about uh, uh, frequency sedation. Um, it's what if we use uh, simulations? Okay, the Monte Carlo uh, methods uh, are good for, um, you know, uh, simulate uh, diverse, diverse outcomes. And here they use the ASTAN um, package. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm, I am now in the, in the book. But let's go back here. Okay. Um, let's say that we use a Markov chain with a proportion of a uh, thousand iteration each. So same 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 environment uh, as we uh, were before, but now we replicate this ten thousand times. Uh, we use our stun. And uh, what we do is define a model. This is our, our stun language. So basically the model is done, uh, you set uh, information inside uh, data, you set the lower and the upper bound for Y, for your uh, variable. And then we have the parameters, uh, which are included between zero and one. Uh, and then here is our model. So it, it is a binomial and a beta. And so this is very our very first prior, okay? A beta of four and six. Then inside, we put this inside. So we name this as an art model. And you can find this art model here. You use this stand function. And so you have uh, uh, the model uh, code, the data, and the you set the chains and the iterations and the, the seeds because it's random so they can it can change anytime okay so run this and then plot it with this function uh, mc mc trace you plot the result of your model uh, and then you can see that they are uh, the chains you, we have four chains. They are quite similar with each other. Uh, there's uh, a little bit difference. And this is the, the result of the distributions. They are quite similar. So I think it's, uh, it's worth it to do simulations. Uh, we, the, the results that we've got are, are very good. And then finally, we can use this R hat function which uh, it's the R, okay? It's uh, so if it's one means that, and it is one in this case, so it means that our results are very good. Uh, and then we have this uh, and if uh, radio, and this is about uh, thirty-seven percent. So finally. Uh, we can combine uh, 20,000 mark, cha mark of chain values with this plot beta. And if we have a look at the MC, MC dense, uh, we see that uh, they, they cover uh, the whole area. Uh, and the result here uh, shows you that the estimate is about 16. And the standard error is um, 0.03. So uh, this is uh, a very good estimation. And then finally, uh, here the, uh, it, it's uh, one more uh, summary of all the results that you can do uh with that and so we can approximate the posterior probability and the result that we obtain is um that we have uh, 
that there will be lower, the probability there will be lower than 20%. Uh, uh, it's, uh, um, uh, through uh, um, eighty-five percent of the time, uh, and then finally they compare the posterior value uh, with the approximation of the Monte Carlo simulations, and as you can see, they're quite similar. So the mean values are sixteen, and the mode as well. So we can say that we can accept the on the the the, the assumption first place. And so finally, uh, utilize uh, the, the utilization of the Markov chain value to approximate the posterior predictive models um, um, is done um, um, using um, um, our um, a random binomial. Uh, and here is the uh, final uh, result. Yeah. And so, and then the, this one compares vision analysis and frequency analysis. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Federica. Um, you presented a lot of great ideas here. Were there any ideas from this chapter that you thought were particularly interesting or that you like? Yeah. Um, as I said, um, the, the, the kickstart. So the the, the 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 prior the assumption the first assumption uh, somehow is important somehow is not important. Um, because sometimes they are very low values and some are very great. Uh, and in the your time the same the same curve. If if I use four and six or if I use eighty. And uh, you know, hundred and twenty. <laughs> unless, uh, unless they they have the same differences within the two, uh, they release the same result. So this is quite challenging to me. Yet. But. Um, So here we have a binomial. Um, basically, repeat the analysis that is done here. Posterior, what is it? Okay, here, posterior prediction, uh, I do, uh, it says that we need to consider the sampling variability and the posterior variability. And then when it uh, use um, Monte Carlo simulations, again, uh, emphasize the fact that we need to consider the variability of both the sampling and the posterior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
But to conclude, um, so we expect roughly three of the next 20 artists to be uh, Generation X or younger, but there is an 80% chance that this figure is somewhere between one and six. That sounds good. And it is interesting how with the Bayesian framework, we need to rethink how we talk about these results as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you once again. Um, should we say that we conclude this chapter? Yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, next week we are going to look at regression models. It looks like. And thank you all. <laughs> and see you next week. Thank you.